Hello, and welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Oner and Mark Friedel from Kempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, and our first story this week is the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2021. And you're looking at the recipients of that award. Benjamin List from the Max Planck Institute in Germany and David McMillan from Princeton University in the US. They won the prize for the development of asymmetric organocatalysis. And I'm not too sure of what this all means, but apparently it's a process that has a a really big impact on pharma research and making chemistries greener. So congratulations to these two gentlemen. Yeah, it's very cool. You can basically build molecules a- as you need them uh, to fit into whatever sort of receptor site, et cetera. So pretty exciting uh, thing to see. All right, and into our next story. Um, basically, when you look at the U.S. chemical sector, there's been a, a huge surge um, post-pandemic in mergers and acquisition. Uh, chemical deals, you know, because of stabilized chemical markets and favorable monetary po- uh, policies, you, you could imagine that mergers and acquisitions, it's a, it's a very favorable environment for that to happen. Um, so even though there's a, a larger volume of deals, uh, one interesting note is that the deals are much smaller in size. Uh, the larger, wa- largest one this year was the Lonza sale, um, which was around just under five billion dollars and if you reverse you know back to 2019 there was uh, roughly 115 billion in these larger deals altogether so generally uh, uh, expect to see an uptick in in M&A activity within our industry yep that's a good sign for our industry and obviously there's a lot of money floating around out there All right, moving on to energy and really the global energy crunch that we've been experiencing lately. Um, Just today, we saw crude oil prices go uh, well over $80 a barrel. Um, Obviously, we're seeing natural gas prices um, almost double this week. In fact, last week they had a a big surge as well where they went over $6. Um, Now they're somewhere in the five, you know, between five and $6 range. Um, but the the global energy crisis is, is appears to be real. Rolling blackouts in China, um, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Um, now, as a result of that, we saw the the rig count in the U.S. increase five from last week, um, which is still well below the peak we saw before the pandemic. Uh, but it is up uh, five from from last week and double from last year. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to see the changes. You know, there's even, you know, there was discussion of uh, potentially rationing electricity within China. So it's, it's. Uh, I think the word crisis is, it, it can be <laughs> maybe overused, but sure. it seems like there's going to be some tough decisions that governments are going to have to make over the next couple months. Yeah, for sure. Maybe not quite crisis, but uh, it's a situation we're all keeping an eye on. All right, so our next story kind of building, uh, not necessarily merges and acquisition, but actually uh, spinning. So Hexion has announced that it's going to be splitting into two separate companies. Uh, it'll happen sometime in 2021, so only a couple months left in this year. Uh, but the two businesses, one will be the adhesives and versatic acid business, and it'll it'll keep the Hexion name and has a sales roughly one and a half billion dollars in annual sales. Uh, And that company will IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, The other side of that business or the second business would be their coatings and composites business, which is all their epoxy based materials. And that name will um, 
come later uh, to be announced. And that that side of the business is a, a little over a billion dollars in annual sales. Um, and the later company will be owned by current private shareholders. So pretty interesting split um, and how they've done that, uh, but clearly trying to take advantage of uh, the success within that uh, adhesives group of uh, the boom in building and construction. Yeah, and Rick, if you look back maybe five, 10 years ago, the Hexion name had you, you know, a much larger annual sales revenue than it has today. There's been a number of things that have split off and sold. It's uh, a fraction of what it used to be. Yeah, well, and, the, and there, you know, there was the, uh, the time or the period where they, they merged with Momentive and then spun that back out. So it's a much different company. For sure, for sure. All right, another merger um, and acquisition news. Craton is being acquired by DL Holdings, and it will merge with DL Chemical, which is owned by DL Holdings. They are planning to acquire 100% of Craton. It appears to be an all cash trans transaction, um, which brings a valuation of about two and a half billion dollars. And they're doing this by acquiring the, the shares of Craton at a $46.5 per share price. And just previous to the announcement, it was trading uh, right around $42 a share. So pretty good bump when this announcement got um, uh, pushed out and uh, a decent premium for, for the company. It's an interesting change. All right, and following that uh, vein, so Cargill uh, announced that they will be acquiring Arkema's epoxides business. Um, ultimately, this move will give uh, Cargill um, its bio-based plasticizers and polyols and now uh, um, epoxides, which allows them to go end to end in that production cycle for these bio-based additives. Um, you know, that uh, that Arkema business has around $40 million in sales, 45 employees, and a production facility in Minnesota. Uh, that transaction is supposed to close in the Q4 this year and selling for about $40 million valuation. Yep, and as we talked about before, it's one of these smaller uh, M&A activities. Similar to the next story here uh, regarding Vertelis. Vertelis is buying two smaller businesses from Chemtrade, and it will expand Vertelis's capabilities in healthcare and pharma applications. The products include potassium chloride, caustic pellets, vaccine adjuvants, and the purchase price will sit around $150 million and it'll close, it'll close this year in uh, Q4. Um, that business, so those businesses that they're buying have roughly 14 and a half million in EBITDA. So roughly selling at an 11x multiple. Yeah, it's been pretty interesting to watch all these, you know, as we've been talking about these sales and spinoffs, et cetera, the, the, basically the, the trading of companies where you can start to see people now kind of narrow their focus for the direction they're heading and anything that doesn't fit with that, you know, the spin off and sell to somebody else. Um, and yeah, a lot of those companies that are acquiring are just basically either consolidating or increasing their market share. Yeah, so that's a great point. Quite a few uh, changes. These companies are definitely narrowing their focus and doing what they do best. All right, and that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We will return next week with a fresh batch of Industry Reactions. And until then, stay safe. Take care.